Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Now I know Christmas is almost here, but we've still got a bunch of new items for the week to show you, and you can probably get some of these in time for the holiday as well. So in keeping with the holiday spirit, I pulled a bunch of these great items for us to check out, so let's check them out. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a little bit self-serving because this is actually one of my fixed blades. This is the Nordsmith Pilgrim LT, which I designed, and it's my take on the right-sized survival knife. So what you get when you buy a Pilgrim LT is a knife that can handle pretty much anything you're gonna to wanna to do when you head outdoors in a very handy size. The blade on this is under four inches long, which not only is it a very controllable length, I find it's one of my preferred lengths on a smaller uh, outdoor fixed blade because it's, like I said, easy to control. You can get a lot of fine work done, but it's still big enough. You can do some things like splitting smaller pieces of wood. And it's gonna stand up to some abuse. And with a shape like this, you can have it on you all the time and you're gonna be able to do what you need to do. It's a nice drop point profile. You can do some hunting with it if you need to, some skinning. It's got a nice fine edge, uses AEBL steel with a really nice thin edge too. So it's gonna cut very efficiently and it's gonna have really high edge stability as well. Eighth of an inch thick with a fairly high flat grind, makes it slice pretty well, but you've still got some pretty good lateral strength. Moving back, the handles are Micarta, in this case black with toxic green liners, has a really cool look. And that actually coordinates with the sheath that comes with this knife as well. It's JRE Industries, both of these made here, right in here, right here, made right here, here in America. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> but you've got a black leather sheath with some green thread, some green stitching, matches up really nicely. And being a JRE sheath, you've got that nice generous loop on the back, dangler, and the fire steel loop on the side. So the last little detail I'll mention, I've got a pommel here, or a, uh, sorry, an apex here at the pommel. And because I want to design this sort of as a quote unquote survival knife, rather than using say a protruding tang that you can pummel on things with, you get that nice little point that allows you to concentrate your force if you need to bash on something, crack it open, but it's still very comfortable to hold. Let's say you're palming it, you need to do some drilling. It's not gonna dig into you. Very comfortable and still effective because the first thing you are gonna hit is that steel that is right there at the tip. Now, for those of you who don't know, I actually partnered up with LT Wright Knives to handle the production of my designs. And so you're getting that same great made in the USA quality there, same great crisp spine for striking a fire steel or scraping. It's a really phenomenal knife. It's done everything I've wanted this size of a knife to do. And it has everything all together in a package that's not quite like anything else I could find out there. Prices on these, $244.95. All right, next up, we've actually got the return of an older item. This is the Boker Burnley ProTech Automatic. I know that's a lot of words because it's a lot of different entities involved in bringing this to fruition. The design, of course, is from Lucas Burnley, who more than anyone else kind of kickstarted the whole Quaken craze in the last few years. The brand, of course, is Boker because they're the ones who handle the production of his Quaken blades, of his production uh, versions of it anyway. And actually older versions of this used to say Boker Plus USA, but the new uh, iteration of it or the new continuation of it actually just says Boker USA, which I think is pretty cool. And the reason it's USA, even though Boker is a German company, is because these are made by ProTech. Now being an automatic, of course it has to be made here in the States in order for us to sell. And being made by ProTech, the action is awesome. One of the best in the business for sure. That little push button, uh, push button action there fires the blade out really nicely. As far as materials, we've got 154CM with a black coating and this awesome flat dark earth aluminum for the handle scales. Also have a stonewash blade variant if you don't want the coated version. And these are all serialized too. And these are, these are as I said, a continuation of the uh, previously available versions of this. So even though the logo on there uh, is a little bit different, the serial numbers are gonna carry over or, or go in sequence from the ones we had before. You know what I'm talking. Prices on these, $189 for the stonewashed and $199 for the black version. All right, so now that we're through that stuff, we're actually starting to see uh, a bunch of the new stuff or the stuff for the new year from the, some of the Chinese imports. We Knife Company and their budget brand Civivi, as well as Best Tech. Their new designs are rolling in right now, and the first one I'll show you is the 920, let me make sure I get this name right, the Miguel Barbudo Bloqueo. It's a mouthful but it's a cool looking knife. 
Blade steel is S35VN, almost four and a quarter inches of it, in fact. Really cool shape. This drop here at the spine makes it sort of a hybrid between a clip point and a drop point. You got a real heavy stonewashed finish, very cool. Moving back, the handles are titanium with a marbled carbon fiber inlay on both sides. And you can get this in a black titanium as well if you want a more, uh, a more subtle look to the handle. I like the, uh, the, this uh, stonewashed version myself with the gray, it looks pretty cool. One thing you'll notice though, is this is a lock back. So it's not a titanium frame lock flipper, although we'll get to some in a minute. It's a lock back that flips, kind of interesting. Dual thumb studs, and there is a bearing in the pivot, and they're having, they have what they are calling a windowed lock back. So you see kind of this keyhole in the leaf spring to the lock back right here, and that actually interfaces with the blade like so. Now I do want to warn you guys about something. This does handle a little bit differently, or this does open a little bit differently than a lot of flickers or flippers you might be expecting or you might be used to. And let me demonstrate why. You are gonna have to put some wrist action into it to get it to work nicely. It does, the blade does pop open really well and it rotates open effortlessly because you've got those bearings, but works well with the wrist action. However, you gotta put that wrist action into it because if you don't, that could happen. Um, it's really hard to get just with your thumb a, enough force to overcome the ramp there and get it to actually engage the lock bar itself. So fair warning out there, just keep that in mind. You know, I'd hate for uh, someone to try and go and, and flip it and wrap their finger back around and the blade come back around. Don't want that to happen to any of you, um, but this is a new, this style of lock is new. I can't think of anywhere where it's uh, shown up before. So that's gonna be great for collectability. It's gonna be very interesting. Uh, prices on these 267.75. All right, I promised you a titanium frame lock flipper. Here you go. This is another from Wii, it's the 922. This one is the 922A. It's the Hecate from Alessandra Decentis. I love that name, it's great. A Little bit smaller of a blade, still a big blade, but smaller than uh, the, the one we just looked at. 3.8 inches thereabouts, CPM 20 CV steel in this case. Stonewashed again, we've got this cool kind of modified Warncliffe, modified sheep's foot style blade. And the cross guard here, the styling that they have here is kind of interesting. Um, it follows this diagonal, which uh, echoes the line of the plunge line there, which is kind of cool, a nice bit of tie-in. And you see that same kind of line uh, when you have it closed up too. You can see we've got some heavily sculpted titanium scales, stone washed finish on here, very similar to the blade, milled pocket clip. You got the name of the knife there on the backspacer, which is nice. And then that backspacer extends into a lanyard hole and a glass breaker pommel there at the end, which is also pretty nice. Action, it's a wee titanium frame lock flipper. It's quite good. No problems whatsoever. Price on this, $259.25, and there's a dark uh, stone, stone wash version as well as this gray version available. All right, now another thing from Wii, and actually this time it's a fixed blade. This is the 921, the 921B specifically right here, and it's the Tony Tietzel Riazio. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, but the, the name of that guy there, Tony Tietzel, you can see you got a little TNT logo here at the back. What's cool about this, uh, kind of in a similar way, not that it looks like these older knives, but in a similar way that say Case used to make fixed blade versions of some of their folders or some of those traditional slip joint companies made fixed blade versions of their folders, you kind of get the same kind of vibe here because at quick glance, if you didn't realize, uh, if you, or at least this is the way it worked out for me, just a quick glance, I saw it you know, sitting on a table over there and I'm like, oh, a new Wii Flipper. Nope, it is a fixed blade. Uh, maybe it's cognitive dissonance because I haven't seen them do much in the way of fixed blades yet. But to my eye, it certainly looks kind of like a, like a folder. But of course the blade in this case is longer than the handle, so it's kind of impossible because we got a bit over four inches of CPM 20 CV here. We've got some really cool compound grinds going on with this stone washed finish, although we've, or black stone washed finish. We've also got a stone washed version. Um, and we've got uh, shredded carbon fiber here for the black version and a regular twill pattern carbon fiber for the stone washed version. But going back to the grinds, they are hollow. Both of these, just two different heights, a skinnier height or a, or a taller hollow grind here at the belly. So you get a little more slicing capability. Um, honestly, it's kind of high style and it's not what I think of as a hunting knife styling wise, but I bet you this would make a, not a bad small hunting knife at all. If it's got a good shape to it, a nice manageable length, 
I think it's pretty cool. On the back of the handle, you can see some screw, uh, some screw hardware here holding the scales to the tang. And on the other side of that hardware, you get the nice Wee Knife Company logo. Comes with a nice sheath too. It's Kydex and it's even got a Techlock style attachment or a Techlock style belt clip. Not an actual Blade Tech Techlock, but the same type of idea. So it's modular, you can move the sheath around, carry it in a few different configurations. Prices on these, $266.50. All right, next we've got a few new Civivi models. Civivi, of course, being made on the same lines as Wee Knife Company, made by the same people, but with some different materials to get the prices down. This is their budget line, and this is the Civivi Shredder. Awesome name for a pretty cool knife. We've got G10 handles with actually some layered coloring. This one's the black and red, although we've got a couple other colors as well. Fair bit of traction on the side, not super aggressive, but a little bit more than a, a really subtle texture. Kind of lives somewhere in between, which is quite nice. Liner locking knife, and the liners are uh, on both sides are skeletonized too, so it removes a little bit of weight, means this is not too heavy of a knife. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible for the left or the right side. And finally, the blade. This is D2, and I like the shape. It's nice and acute. You got a really fine tip to get some really nice detail work. You've got a continuous curve to the edge, so it's gonna be a really, uh, really satisfying slicer. Even a little bit of a finger choil here to choke up. Not quite a full finger choke up for thicker fingers like mine, but I can get the tip of my finger in there for a little finer detail. The action, it still rides on bearings just like the Wii knives, so it's quite good. And with this broad cutout, you can actually do some of the middle finger flick stuff as well. Pretty nice, cool kind of fidget factor there. Uh, $61 on the Civivi Shredder. So next one, we're gonna go a little bit smaller. Uh, that blade was about 3.7 inches, and this one is just a hair over three inches. This is the Little Fiend. Several different colors of this knife are also available. I've got the G10, or the orange G10 right here. Similar, uh, kind of a similar overall construction to the Shredder. We've got skeletonized liners, deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible for both sides. And it really is truly deep carry. You've got a little bit sticking out just past the end of the handle, so it's gonna bury it nice in there. It'll work even better if you don't have bright orange too. <laughs> if you use one of the, the gray or the black, it's gonna blend in a little better. The orange might still stick out a little bit. Blade steel again is D2, uh, 4850 on this little knife here. So this would be, if this was out a month ago or a little bit over a month ago when we made that uh, video on best D2 folders under 50, this one would probably have been in there because it's great. It's a great little knife, good action, Phenomenal blade steel, great construction. You can do that flipper or you can do the thumb opening with the hole. I can't quite get it to do the middle finger flick. Um, it's not, it's a little harder to get into, uh, mostly down due to the, uh, the tip of the finger groove right here. It's kind of getting in the way of right where I want to put my middle finger to do that flick. Yeah, I'm not getting it too well. Just flip it, it's nice. All right, one more Civivi. This is the Governor. Now this is not a flipper, this is a thumb stud equipped knife, but again, similar kind of handle construction, similar style to those previous two. Skeletonized full liners on both sides, G10 handle scales, various colors. I've got the blue one right here, deep carry pocket clip, reversible, quite nice, and D2 blade steel, but it's a thumb stud flicker instead of a flipper tab flipper. Works very well, got those nice bearings there in the pivot, uh, D2 blade steel, I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, bigger blade here, almost three, or a bit over 3.8 inches. So you're getting close to a four inch blade, close to a four inch pocket knife for just $55.25 with this bad boy. Fairly flat carry, all, all of these Civivis are in fact, that's how they keep the prices where they are. Um, but the handle, not so much the blade, the handle actually kind of reminds me of a, uh, some of the Shiragorov models out there. So if you don't have the money to drop on a Shiragorov, Shiragorov you might want to go for one of these. Blade point is kind of cool. Technically it's a drop point, but it's got an interesting vibe to it. It's almost kind of almost a hybrid between a Warncliffe and a drop point. Um, I don't know, it's something about the way the shape strikes me. It has a little bit more of a drop, um, a droop to the, almost like a droop, honestly, to the tip. It come, brings it below the center line a little bit, which the advantage of that, you're gonna be able to do some scoring cuts quite nicely. And if you're doing longer, powerful cuts, it's gonna keep the tip down and less likely to slip out. Let's say you're breaking down a bunch of cardboard. That's gonna come in handy. It's gonna be a good uh, usage there. Hollow grind on this knife. In fact, all of these Civivis were hollow ground. Again, another way for them to keep the price down over some of those flat ground knives. 
Really cool though, the Civivi Governor, 55, 25, and all of these, between about 50 and 60 bucks for these Civivis, great deals. All right, we're gonna move on from the Wii Civivi line, uh, or the Wii Civivi company, so to speak. That's not, that sounds like I'm saying something. Wii Civivi over here. So we're moving on to Best Tech. And this is a new model called the Shodan, and this is actually designed by Todd Knife and Tool, who you may recognize from Instagram and from the Zelric YouTube channel. And this is his latest collaboration with Best Tech. This is a titanium frame lock flipper, so if you were jonesing for another one, here you go. Uh, kind of an interesting angular shape, and I really like the blade on this. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a Spyderco blade shape. Like if you put a little uh, opening hole there, I mean, all the way. Really cool shape either way. It's really, you know, a cute spear point, nice curve to the edge, high flat grind with S35 VN steel. Longer blade again, about 3.8 inches. We've got a few different variants as well. In addition to the satin, you can get a black stone washed and you can get the either of those knives, either of those finishes, I should say, with either a full titanium frame or with the front being shredded, or sorry, yeah, marbled carbon fiber. That wee knife earlier was shred carbon fiber. Marbled carbon fiber on the front, again, or you can get full titanium. Prices on these start at 230, up to 246, or right around 246 for the carbon fiber version. Turning it over, you've got titanium frame, nice milled pocket clip that's more than just a simple straight. They've got a nice little kick right there. Provides a little bit of, of extra visual flair and kind of leaves a little bit of space for that lanyard slot that's integrated into the back of the knife there as well. Action, really good. You got bearings there in the pivot, of course. And you got the Todd Knife and Tool logo there on the front side of the pivot collar as well. Nice size finger choil there at the front, lets you choke up. Another thing that kind of makes me think of a Spyderco a little bit when I think of this knife. Um, also, nice fuller that runs the length of the blade and a little bit of a thumb slot as well. And this is another one, you can do that index finger flick very nicely. Definitely think you could get some harder work done with this knife. It's certainly got the build quality behind it and the quality behind it, but it's a little bit more of a, just a really good statement piece, a pocket you know, a piece of pocket jewelry, and it does that very well. Even though the blade has a more organic shape and the handle's a little more faceted, they do work together, I think, very well. I like the little spot here that you can use, put your thumb on or choke up. It's a cool knife, definitely a cool little knife. Best Tech Shodan. All right, next up, we've got a little guy from Best Tech. It's called the Tulip, and this is a series of knives. Now, you can get this in two different versions. You can get it with a frame lock, or a non-locking double detent version. But either one you get, it's a really cool, well, speaking of pocket jewelry, it's a smaller piece of pocket jewelry, but it's a really cool little Kiridashi-inspired folder for $126. Now, that may seem a little bit pricey, but you do get premium materials with that. You do get M390 steel, and you do get that titanium body. You also get a good designer behind it. This is an Ostop Hell design. Nice little lanyard attachment point at the back as well as a milled pocket clip. Now we do get bearings in the pivot and the frame lock version, version is a front flipper design. Got a nice jimped tab here, works well as thumb jimping when it's open. And while some of us here at the office have been able to flick it pretty nicely with your index finger, kind of like so, I've actually dropped one the, the time I tried to do it. So I'm not gonna do it here on camera, but it's real easy to use your thumb. Try to give it a good view. It was a little awkward me doing that reverse like that. So it actually is Fairly simple to do, nice and smoothly, if you're not trying to get the camera to see a good shot of it. Now the double detent version, I, I hesitate to call it a slip joint or a friction folder, because it doesn't have a, a slip joint back spring, and it's not quite friction provided by the handle itself, but you have two detent balls on acting on either side of the blade that hold the blade open. Kind of real similar to that new ZT230 that just came out. You get the same kind of setup here. Now this one actually has sort of a top flipper tab, and this one I find very easy to flick. Quite nice, pretty fun to use, pretty satisfying. Although ZT got the flickable uh, slip joint, whatever you wanna call it first. No matter, this one's another little really cool knife. Got a bunch of different anodized colors as well. I've got two of them here. Uh, the blue is quite nice, but I really like this color here, which on our website, this is the pink version, but really it looks more of like a rose gold. It has a really cool look. We've also got a more bronzy bra or a more brassy goldish anodized look, but I like the subtle hints of pink, the little subtle hints of kind of magenta or red, 
creating this ro rose gold look, because you don't see it too often. And it's really pretty. It has a really cool look. But anyway, that's the tulip from Best Tech 126. All right, let's say you're not a small knife person and those tulips just made you kind of shudder. Got the antidote for you right here with a new Medford Praetorian G. This is a big hoss for sure. We've got Digicam handles, S35 VN steel with a black PVD coating. And like every Medford out there, it is strong, it is overbuilt, got that frame lock on the back. And this is a one hand opening knife. You're actually supposed to use this fuller Place your thumb at the end here, and as you rotate it out, your thumb's actually gonna ride up the fuller. Now, it may seem a little awkward just by looking at it or just by thinking about it, but in person, it's actually pretty intuitive. It works quite well. Price on this knife is 600. You've got that great Medford warranty, that great build quality. This thing is built like a tank. We've got three and three quarter inches of blade, three sixteenths of an inch thick, and nice and broad, as you can tell. It's really gonna stand up to a lot of abuse. In addition to that, you can actually kind of think of this knife like a dual steel knife. This is S35 VN and D2. Not on the blade, of course, but the pommel here is hardened. It's a nice glass breaker uh, tool, glass breaker execution, and that is made from D2 tool steel there at the back. Now, if this is way too big and way too out there for you, I don't blame you, but in terms of a, making an impression when you pull it out, not a lot is gonna top that for sure. Medford Praetorian G, 600 bucks. All right, let's keep the tactical going. We've got a new folding karambit from Fox Knives and Daraspina. This is the Chiroptera. Really cool sounding, badass dinosaur a name. I like it. This is made in Italy. We've got N690 steel with a black coating. And the handle is sized pretty well. I've got hands that are on the larger side. They're not huge, uh, but they're definitely on the bigger side and I've got plenty of room there uh, to hold on to. It's quite nice. Finger ring, all the edges are crowned, both on the inside and the out so it's nice and comfortable, no hot spots there to speak of. The handle construction themselves, it is a liner locking model, and we've got G10 scales, OD green in this case. You got a nice divot here on the side as well, which if I didn't know any better, if this were a bushcraft knife, that would be a bow drill divot. I don't think you're really gonna be doing that with a karambit, but actually when you're holding the knife with your finger, or your index finger through the ring, my middle finger finds that, uh, that little divot very naturally. It's a good place for indexing the knife and it provides a little bit of extra grip as well, or a little bit of a pinch point. It really helps you maintain a really good hold on this blade, which has a really kind of interesting, really cool double recurve shape, which definitely has a lot of cutting potential to it. With a shape like this, as you pierce through material, of course you got a lot of different cutting edges that are gonna make contact as you come in. And then it's gonna do the same thing as you come out as well. So you can get a lot of cutting done. Price on this knife, $131.95. Actually got a quick accessory for you. And this, we're actually gonna jump back to Best Tech. This is a new carabiner under their Best Techman line of accessories. In addition to that gated carabiner, it has a nice strong spring behind it too. It snaps really nicely. You've also got a hex driver here on the end that can turn standard size screwdriver bits. So obviously it's not gonna be the first thing you reach for, but you can turn one of those if you need to in a pinch. And it's a multi-tool because it has a bottle opener on it. Because of course it does. You wanted it to, it's on there. Best Techman Carabiner Titanium in a few different colors for $42. Lastly, we've got a new item or two new items from G Sakai that they're calling the Outdoor Cooking Knife. And I say two items, it's the same thing, but you can get it either fully serrated or with a plain edge blade. Price on this is only $29.95, and for that, you're getting 440C steel, uh, about six and a half inches of it, in fact, and it's got a nice thin profile, a little bit of flex to it, not super, not a ton, not like a fillet knife or even a really good flexible boning knife, but kind of a, some of the stiffer boning knives out there, you're gonna get a similar vibe to this. Got an over-molded handle, and in addition to being contoured nicely, you got some good divots and some good pinch points. It's got a really subtle honeycomb texture going over the whole thing. Makes it really easy to hold on to. And then you got a finger choil there up at the front that you can choke up on. Now, in addition to like some cooking stuff, of course it will work for that. You're gonna be able to slice pretty nicely. Actually, I think this would make a good fishing knife or a good boating knife too. Maybe even a good dive knife. Eh, maybe not. It's not, it's not really gonna be good for prying or anything like that. But it would be good in maritime environments, especially with the serrated version. You can cut through uh, rope or nets very easily with it. And the sheath kind of reinforces that idea as well. 
It is a plastic affair, but it does snap in fairly nicely. It's not Kydex like retention, but you know, I wouldn't expect it to be, but that's going to work well, whether you're putting it in your, uh, in your camp cooking kit or whether you're wearing it while fishing or on a boat, got a nice swiveling belt loop there on the back, but all in all for an inexpensive outdoor knife, it's not going to be the main thing you throw on your belt when you're going hunting or going bushcrafting or anything like that. But I do think it kind of fulfills a very nice little niche in the outdoor market. So that's just some of the great new stuff that's hit our shelves in the last week. If you want to get your hands on any of them, we're going to leave links to them in the description below where you can head over to Knife Center and pick one up, especially those Nordsmiths. Very cool knives, I must say. But that's about it for this week. Thanks for sticking around with us all throughout the year. We're looking forward to our holidays and we hope you are too. We're looking forward to the new year. We're going we're gonna to have even more cool new stuff. It's like a kid in a candy store when I come into work. It's always new stuff to look at. And I'm going to share all of it with you here at the YouTube channel. I'm David C. Anderson signing off. See you next time. Pretty much anything you get. Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Well, we can't use that now. <laughs> I'm almost out of beans. Wait, that's actually usable. <laughs> that's the Baby Yoda meme. Beanie Yoda. Mm-hmm.